watching them on film, it's it's almost like watching a self scout. Uh, they're very very similar. Uh, Coach Newbauer, you know, from Belmont used to run a lot, a lot of set actions. Now it's more motion, dribble drive. Um, Lavender, watching Lavender Briggs is like watching Chelsea. Uh, Ricards is like watching Slocum. Um, you know, it's it's like watching a, a, a self scout. Uh, they're in a really situ a situation like we are, where their their schedule is really front end loaded. They played four of the best defensive teams in our conference already in Georgia, Mississippi State, South Carolina, and Texas A&M. Um, you know, it's um, very, very similar time of the year for both of us. They haven't miss, missed any games. They've been very fortunate. And they've been really doing a good job with COVID as well. So finally, we get a matchup of two teams that are really, really similar spaces um, with similar styles. So should be should be an intriguing matchup. Paul, go ahead. Hey, right, well, let's start about, you know, you guys split two games a year ago, and I know you guys had a really good fourth quarter against them here to kind of pull away. Uh, did they do anything different against you guys the second time, just just from a stand, strategy standpoint, or did they just play better? They, they were at home, and they played better. We were at home, and we played better. I was, that's the difference in it is it's very small differences that can magnify um, – I, I, there was nothing strategic that I – I mean, they rolled their big kid to the basket, which they don't really have that same type of big kid this year that they did last year that they throw it to around the rim. They've got some big kids, but they all shoot the three. Uh, so, you know, I, I pointed out to our post players yesterday and, and Aaron and Taylor and Oberg, you know, that, that between them that we've shot 19 free throws in SEC play. Their bigs have shot eight. So it's not like they're throwing it around the basket a lot. It's it's a lot of the damage is done when their guards drive it in there and then their big shoot. So, um, no, last year, you know, uh, it was a matter of a home who was at home and um, the, the home crowd last year made a big difference. This year, that's not near as much as a factor. But travel's a lot more um, impactful this year than it was last year as well. So road trips are hard. Uh, you know, if there's any advantage at all for tomorrow night, the only thing is that we have to walk across the street and they have to get on a, fl a flight and come up here and play. But there's there's no major changes or advantage. They, they didn't have a whole bunch of new faces. These are a lot of kids we're very familiar with. We've got a lot of returners. Uh, so the familiarity will carry over, but I, I don't see anything major difference. Brett, go ahead. And Mike, real quick, first of all, anything on, on Amber? Uh, we expect her to practice full today for the first time. I haven't got the all clear yet. I was hoping to get that by noon. Uh, she was able to return to practice yesterday and shoot only, no contact. Uh, hopefully we make some progress in that area today. And if, if not, we'll roll with the, the kind of the rotations we had, you know, similar to Texas A&M with uh, Q early, Jalen starting, uh, and Oberg and Riley having to give us some, some minutes as needed. You know, you uh, you talked about each team with their schedule, and I know it's been comparable. You've each had a gauntlet. So it's only human nature if, if I'm playing for you and I look at the schedule, I'm like, maybe this is finally this is finally a let-up. But it's not a let-up. So how do you uh, kind of fight through that, you know? Well, you, you, be, uh, you do what we've always talked about doing. You talk about it. You say, listen, they're there. This is where we are. This is the schedule they have in front of them. This is the schedule they ha we have in front of us. And, and you talk about it. You, you eliminate all ambiguity of what people might think and, and tell them what they, they should know, not just think. This is one of 16. And that's when you look at it that way, I can't all of a sudden go in there and start saying, hey, this is a must win because this, this, and that. You can't do that. This is our chance against Florida at home. Then what does everybody else do against Florida when they play them at their home court? And what does everybody else do when they go to Tennessee? You can't look at it in a segment. Although we, we, a lot of times when we're talking, we talk about it in segments, you know, but you can't look at it that way when it comes to a league standing. Somebody said to me yesterday, does it feel weird to be – it was Grant Hall. I was on Grant Hall's show. He said, hey, y'all are 10th in the SEC, but you're 17th in the country. Well, first of all, that speaks to the quality of the SEC. I know we're a four-loss team still ranked, but our losses to teams in the top 10 – with a win in there and then a loss at Tennessee who, you know, I think should have been ranked a couple of weeks ago. Anyhow, you can't look at standings until it matches up until everybody's played everybody at least once. And then even in the end, it doesn't really matter because not everybody's played everybody the same twice. 
and you don't play home and away. So uh, I know they're a necessary thing for people to use as a gauge, but, but we've really tried to get away from some of that stuff. But I think to your point, Brett, just being aware and talking about it, that this game still be, is worth one, one win or one loss in the column. It doesn't make your season if you win it. It doesn't end your season if you lose it. Uh, but it does have impact on what you do in leading into this next segment. We, we've got a really tough next two games, too. we got back-to-back Monday night games. You know, we are kind of sitting around wondering if we're going to get a game that Thursday. You know, that's kind of something to put on everybody's radar a little bit. That has been built in for everybody to have that bye date at the same time. We could get a phone call that says, hey, we're moving your Auburn game up. I'm just I'm just using this one. out of pulled it out of the hat. From later in the year, we're moving it to that Thursday because we've got an open date. We're going to play them as we can. Um, so I don't want the team looking ahead. We as coaches can, but the game against Florida is important because it's the game against Florida. You get them at home. Seth, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, uh, a lot has been made about y'all in uh, trying to contain the pace of play, teams doing that against y'all. How do you counter that and play to the pace that y'all want to? It's funny. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. We, Everybody always says we want to play all this incredible pace. We say it's functionally fast for a reason. You can only go as fast as your opponents allow you to on defense because we're not going to try to speed them up. We have to be very uh, functional. If we can go fast, yes. But if not, then get a good shot however you can create it. So in practice, we have lengthened the shot clock back out. We have said you either score in the first 10 or the last 10. You can't even score in the middle 10 anymore. It's not an option. Okay, so you score in the first 10 or the last 10. If you score in that middle 10, good job. No points on the board. And I think what it's done is it's forced our kids to understand we're going to look for actions. So, you know, it, it takes it, it doesn't take long for people to find the formula once somebody beats us with it. Um, but we've we've got to continue to have an evolution into this next phase of this is what you do when this team decides to play this way. And, and we take it as a compliment. Uh, but we are not over here constantly yelling at them to play faster, play better, play, fu- play functionally. And if it is fast, that's great. But if not, we've got to be comfortable uh, in execution. Uh, and, and I just, I, I've tried, we've tried to break that narrative down, but I, I know that the, the narrative is fast, 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 fast. But that's really not what it goes on in practice. Jason, go ahead. Hey, Coach, are you getting what you want out of Taylor and Aaron? And is this a game where, where their bigs like to come out and shoot where maybe that opens things up for them on the other end of the floor as well with not yeah. having to play so much inside? Yeah, Taylor, Taylor has done it consistently now uh, all year long, last couple of years. Aaron's still in, in spurts. You know, there's spurts where it's as good as, as we hoped and others where there's a little bit of a slip. So we got to continue to get her closer to being able to play her minutes at, at full. That's where Oberg has kind of emerged a little bit to give us three to five minutes if we need it because her size is impactful. Uh, but Taylor, absolutely. Aaron somewhat. And, and Oberg's doing a great job in practice uh, being ready and, and being available if those minutes by either one of them aren't productive. Uh, but, yeah, very pleased. You know, Taylor, again, if you ask me to have to say who has filled their role as well as anybody, I mean, she's in that conversation. She fills her role. She knows her role, executes her role, accepts her role, all those things, which incredibly valuable for uh, a, a team to have. Jacob, go ahead. Mike, a uh, quarter of the way through this SEC schedule, playing, you know, a, a ranked, a legit team every night. Where's the, the confidence of your team through through four games? Where do they Where do they lie? I think it's took a sting. I mean, it took a hit. I'm not going to, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all know me well enough to know now. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it, it got, we got stung a little bit. Uh, and part of that was, you know, being humbled a little bit in that um, some people let all the attaboys and attagirls get to them. And, and, and it didn't change how they played or how they prepared. All it changed was, was kind of like, again, 
a little bit of lack of self-awareness that just because we have this ranking beside us, it doesn't mean winning at Kentucky is any easier. They were picked ahead of you in the preseason. If the polls had, depending on how their schedule was, they could have been ranked higher than you. It was not an upset. And, and, and that's a fine line to walk with an athlete of that confidence that you're talking about. You wanted to have a little bit of swag. You do. You don't want that to be stolen from them. Um, but we lost a little bit of our self-awareness during that. I don't think it was confidence. I think we lost a little bit of self-awareness of what it all meant. Um, and, and that's natural, and it's a good thing because of how our kids responded to it. Um, I, I think every team I've ever been a part of has gone through it, uh, and it's how you respond, and our group really responded. Uh, the conversations I had with them, the conversations they had with each other, uh, without coaches setting it up, we're all really, really positive. I, y'all may disagree, but I think we played our best game Sunday. It just wasn't good enough to win. We played much better against them than we did against Baylor. Much better. Just wasn't quite good enough to win. We played great defense on that last possession. The kid made a hell of a shot. The arrow was never in our right direction. You have seven turnovers, and some of them are, you know, it's just we played good. Played about as good as we have all year. Just didn't get the win to be rewarded for it. So that's the film we tried to show. Uh, but to answer your question, yeah, it was shaken. Uh, confidence and, and our self-awareness. Porter, go ahead. Coach, talk about the team's focus. Do you think it, it really helps the team focus more with, with South Carolina looming going into this Florida game, one and three opposed to if they were three and one? Well, I, I think the loss at, at Florida last year still is in our – you know, our, our recent enough memory that that wasn't going to be a problem looking ahead or staying extra focused. This is about Florida. This is nothing to do with anything other than that. They beat us the last time we played. Uh, they've got a style of play that is comparable to ours. They've got a lot of and, – and, and, too, we know some of these kids. A lot of these kids – some of these kids played together and with each other on various teams. Uh, I think that helps your focus when you get a situation like that. And the other part is we are at home. And for us this year, that is, the difference between home and a road game for us is so different because of the, the travel that we've been doing and how we've been doing it uh, to, to avoid contact tracing. You know, uh, we, we're, we're not going to stop COVID, obviously. Uh, that's uncontrollable. But the tracing, um, you know, can be something that uh, we do control. And, and I'll, I'll go ahead and let y'all know this. I, I don't think I've told Mario yet. Sorry for breaking news here. So if you got a little, but, but coach Schaefer's family um, has a positive and he's going to be not at the game on Thursday. So, uh, you know, that's the first time we've had it impact our coaching staff. Uh, so that means, you know, like I've told y'all before, he's been doing our defense. So that's a shift for me. Uh, and a shift for Chantel to take over a lot of the offensive responsibilities and me to shift into the defensive responsibilities with Pauline and, and Coach Shirey. Uh, we can use her. There was a, a waiver this year that allowed two extra people to come onto the floor. So Coach Shirey's been uh, very helpful this week in preparing for Florida and their defense. Uh, but we won't have Coach, Coach Todd physically on the bench with us yes, uh, on Thursday night. Mike, I was going to ask you about that, but I was waiting. I didn't want to jump in, but I, I, I saw that yesterday at practice. I don't think I've ever seen you coach that that much or that hard filling in for him. Well, um, you know, I, when I was an assistant coach, that's what I did. I was that, I was the defense. And it was kind of fun to be back out there. Um, but I, I think it's very important when, when in practice when that they have one voice on on that side of the ball. And I don't say much. It's it's his side of the ball. So I'm, I'm there to, you know, observe. Uh, we have our conversations in the office. But at practice time, uh, that that's his time. And uh, so my voice was maybe a little louder. Uh, and I was out there. I, I give him – sometimes I just leave the floor. I think it's very, very important that all my assistants have uh, integral roles for our team, uh, for their future, uh, for them to be when they're head coaches, how that works. I know it helped me when Kevin McGuff would leave the floor and say, you got him. That got me ready to be a head coach. Uh, so I'm trying to pass that on down. Uh, it is a different voice. We did it the exact same way. It was just a different voice, same terminology, same everything. Um, but I hope the kids didn't I hope you were the only one that really noticed the difference, Brett. 
Paul, go ahead. Uh, I'll go back to what was well, something you said earlier about, you know, I know everybody pumps up the, the thing about you wanting you to play fast, 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 yeah. but isn't it more about, uh, I guess, a, a clash of styles, them wanting to, to push you toward, uh, you know, their style of play versus the way you guys want to play? Yeah, is that- it is a little bit of that. I, I think what most people know is we are most dangerous the faster it gets going. So they they try to slow it down to the point that that danger is as negligible as possible. Our points per play is still about the exact same as it's been. Our possessions are down. But again, we can't – I'm not – we're not going to be able to control what time in the shot clock they're trying to shoot. Hey, and Paul, it's gotten – listen, it's gotten to where, again – uh, it's not quite to the level where football teams were faking injuries to slow people down, but we're not, we're taking our time getting the ball out of bounds. We're taking our time coming out of timeouts. We're in, and I'm pointing that out. It, it is a, it is a strategy. Uh, but yeah, I do. I think it's a clash of styles. It's the way those teams play and they're, they're playing better than them. And we, because of how we choose to defend, we're not near as disruptive defensively. We are a schematic contained contest. Uh, take you out of your systems and then do our best to rebound it. And some of these teams can just simply not execute very well and get an offensive rebound and stick it back in. So uh, our, our, our defensive rebounding needs to continue to improve. Um, We've got to come up with three or four more of those. I mean, you come up with one more of those against A&M and uh, and they don't get to stick back in the end one, just things like that. Uh, That's, and, and, and usually, Paul, that's only the difference in beating the very, very top teams, stuff like that. So, listen, I, I will tell you, I, you know, I've, I've talked to you all about those dominoes before about knocking them down in order. And if you skip one, I, I think we tried to skip one the last month, two months. I think the Baylor win, as natural as that is, maybe maybe we got there, we pulled, up, we pulled one of these dominoes out of this stack and – Again, we haven't won an NCAA tournament game in a long time. No, not one person out there on the floor except Destiny Slocum has. Okay, I guess I guess so, I guess, uh, I guess um, Chelsea won one at Washington. They beat Gonzaga that year. But we have we there's still some dominoes in there that we we kind of tried to remove, and and we've put those dominoes back in there. That is get into this tournament, get into it. You know, stop stop reading you know, ESPN bracketology and looking where you're playing and and thinking that that's gospel. That is Charlie Cream doing his absolute best to predict the current state of affairs. Doesn't guarantee anything. So that's my fault for letting those dominoes be removed, partly responsible for it. But I can assure you we've been shoving those dominoes back in there saying you can't play, you can't win a game in it unless you get in it. And we need to get enough conference wins. And here's an opportunity to do one of those things at home. Seth, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, I just want to ask about the uh, recovery or if there's any update on Alana Eaton. Yeah, she's doing good. Uh, we are go- going really, really slow because there's no reason to go fast. Um, and it's this is, you know, her second knee injury, uh, one from high school early in her career and one now. So uh, Spirit-wise, she's handled it as good as any freshman I've ever seen handle a season-ending uh, knee injury for a kid that was in a place like hers. I, you know, she was going to be contributing. Uh, she was going to be contributing a lot. And she had played herself. She had earned the respect of those teammates. So there was a lot to be let down about. But she's handled it great. I don't think she – there was one day I think I remember her not being able to make it to a practice, but it was academically related. She's there. She's engaged. She's talking. She's curious. You know, I always, I always uh, ask, talk kids about, are you, are you really curious about how we do this thing? You can tell that by whether they ask questions or not. Um, and she asks questions all the time. So she's curious, and that's a good sign. But, I, you know, physically she's ahead of a schedule. We're just not putting her out there in a, in a practice format, practice gear yet, because – uh, it's not going to help her recovery and it's not going to speed up when, when we would be back in needing her to play. 
Jason, go ahead. Hey, Coach, you talked about pace and trying to figure out the balance and the pace. I, I go back to the, the start of the third and the start of the fourth the other day and the runs that you went on and then kind of – I know runs end and other teams go on the runs. Were there learning experiences at the end of those runs – when the shots maybe were coming a little bit quicker than maybe you wanted or any of that kind of thing that kind of squashed those runs that you had when you were really rolling there to start those quarters? Yeah, you, you can develop a pattern. You know, some teams you, you, you have to take a little heat check, you know, and instead of doing what you've been doing, you check the heat and now that's a miss and that heads you the other direction. That's where we're at. That's what we're capable of, I think. That's our, uh, that's our run stopper. When we're on a run – and all of a sudden, we try something to, just to see how hot we are—a deeper three, or a off the dribble three, or a, maybe somebody that hadn't been making the shots tries to get into the mix. That's usually an indicator of our run stoppers. Um, you know, de defensively, when we stop somebody else's runs, that's been creating turnovers. You know, we've been—we've created a few more turnovers this year than we have. It's either a big tough rebound by one of our guards. They, they call themselves big guard stuff when they do a big guards thing or we get a turnover and, and run the other direction that ends the other team's run. So uh, yeah, those are indicators, not always, but it, for the most part, those are things that, that stop us and stop the other teams. Jacob, go ahead. Uh, Mike, I know you said you really haven't looked too, too far ahead to the South Carolina game. I was just curious when, when you do drop a couple road games in a row does it ever begin to in your mind to maybe change up any of the routine you've done when you guys go on the road or does it strictly just stick to, you know, just the way you guys have, have played? Oh no. I, my greatest fear is I do things wrong every single day in every aspect of my life. That's just, I, I'm always afraid I'm doing it wrong. What if gravity doesn't really work? I mean, gravity, the theory of gravity has changed every 300 years and we're due for one. I mean, I'm ready for somebody to come in and say, you've been wrong. So, no, I beat myself up mercifully, mercilessly on stuff like that. But I always go back to that meeting I've had with our, our council of kids. Uh, you can't have a captain when you have seven seniors and, and, a, and a couple of juniors who have been there every day. We don't have captains. We have a council. Every single time I talk to them, I reaffirm that they want to play as many games as possible. Win, lose, tie season ripped out from under you and not even get to finish, they want to play, okay? So that's where I go back to that. We have not had one game even in jeopardy because of contact tracing. And that's all you can control. You can't control who gets it, but you can control the contact tracing. Do I think that we are at a disadvantage because of the way we do our timeouts? Yes. Do I think it's a disadvantage to not go in the locker room at halftime? Absolutely. Do I think traveling the day of the game is harder than not traveling the day of the game? 1,000%. But we're still playing. And that's the only thing that that group, they, they don't, they've learned to deal with it, gain some adversity, gain some trust. They take some pride in it. But do I second guess every single day? Order, I don't know the answer. I, I don't know the answer. And I'm not sure we ever will. I mean, Again, you go, well, could we have gotten one more stop at Kentucky to win the game? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But, again, if we'd been traveling and sitting on top of each other during all these timeouts, we might have not gotten to play the game. So I always weigh it back through that. And as long as we continue to lead the country in games played, I know that's not a stat anybody gives a crap about. Uh, but it, it means something to us this particular year. Porter, go ahead. Coach, I wanted to ask about Taylor real quick. She looked like she come down kind of awkward in that fourth quarter on her or either her ankle or her knee and just just kind of her status. Uh, she's in the training room more than our athletic trainer is. I mean, that kid is an absolute warrior, uh, but she can handle it because she she really takes care of recovery and prehab. Uh, but she's not been 100 percent since this summer. Um but she's played at 100% effectiveness because of all the work she does with Simone and our athletic training staff in that room. She is in there um, just – she's very committed to that so that she can play the minutes she has. But she's not 
she's not anywhere where she feels like she did when, you know, when she was a hundred percent. Um, but she gives us a hundred percent and that's, that's just the type of kid Taylor is. And has always been, she's always been that way. 